Rich Halliday on location for the look. You know it's been said that you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And locally there's an artist in town by the name of Irina Gretchenea who's making major waves in the art scene. We're here at 150 Dunlop Street to portray that gal, that amazing gal with the understanding of what it really is to be perceptive in the understanding of true talent. She uh, was born in Russia, Moldavia, I believe, or next door to Russia. And she immigrated to the Toronto area to perform a career, or prepare for a performance career at, the, uh, at Ryerson University, moving forward from there and realizing her talent as a fashion illustrator just wasn't enough to carry her true drive as an artist on campus. So today I bring you Irina Gretchenea here in Barrie at Dunlop Street Gallery. Okay. How do you get the time, Irina Gretchenea, with a, a mother of one and a, a functioning society gal here in town to create the way you do? Well, it's all about priorities. I've learned that a little while ago because I, this is what I love to do. Your passion and is truly on I canvas. I love everything to do with art and I really try to make time every day and whenever I can just go in the studio and paint and this is really my true and the most um, important fashion. When you were skimming your career as a fashion illustrator at Ryerson, what made you realize that it was really meant to be that you were going to be an artist on canvas? I think I first started when I took classes, the art classes to prepare for my portfolio. Yeah. And I tried oils and I think this is where I fell in love. The color and uh, the texture I can create that I couldn't do with the pencil watercolors. And I really never put the brush down since. And Really, I just started to uh, create bigger and um, bigger masterpieces and work more on my oils here in Barrie, but always been uh, doing that as a hobby and always uh, grew as an artist with every painting. And this is what you see is the mm, collection of amazing. the summer. I experienced you long before you and I met face to face at the Kampenfeld mm -hmm. uh, gal gallery down at the Kampenfeld uh, Summerfest. Yes, Kampenfest. A Kampenfest. Yes. And you know what? I didn't know you then, but you say that was the uh, springboard that gave you the feeling of confidence about your own art here in Barrie, because you're an immigrant here from Toronto eight years now, right? Yes. So Camp and Fest really did it for you. Camp and Fest was probably the most incredible thing that happened to me, and um, I think the reason being because Camp and Fest uh, connects so many different people in yeah. one spot. Yeah. And, um, this was my first venue in Barrie. This is something that I wanted to do and I was encouraged by friends and people that see my artwork. And the first year I did it, it was an amazing success and I was really accepted warmly with the crowd and uh, we made it in a newspaper that night. You sure and did, we have it to prove. The, sold the painting <laughs> the first night and it really gave me a courage as an artist to yeah pursue it on a different level and uh, the first Camp and Fest really gave me the yeah. wings to gave display you. my artwork. Gave you the headlines and it's ultimate because uh, every piece in this gallery showing when you uh, curtains up 10 or 12 days ago mm -hmm. with the beginning of the gallery showing uh, everyone came into the uh, gala the opening and said wow this is almost as though this artist was 15 artists because each mood you create and capture on canvas is almost like a different uh, quadrant of your persona going to canvas. You're, you're many people living in there, this artist you are. When I paint Richard, uh, I really like to experiment with colors and styles and different textures. Mm. I, it's almost like I can't paint the same um, motif or the same uh, color combination twice. I really love to play with colors. I really play, like to uh, play with different styles and achieve that perfection. And if you can see in my artwork, mm -hmm. it's uh, very realistic mm -hmm. and I really um, like the perfection. I really, it's something that I think is a signature of my pieces mm -hmm. where you see perfect lines and perfect colors and mm -hmm. perfect clarity. And it doesn't matter um, if it's a tree, if it's a flower, if it's um, of still life, mm -hmm. but in the end of the day, I still like that perfection. And again, different styles make me evolve as an artist. 
Let's get a little specific with this piece behind you now. It's pretty special. Come on over with me. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration that made you sit down and create this fantastic Have No Fear, you call this. And why is that? The reason I call it Have No Fear is because this piece completely terrified me. When I looked at the picture, I absolutely loved the trees. I've absolutely loved the colors. But it really scared me to have all of these um, sticks and, and trees all <laughs> intertwined together and the first question I had was how am I going to make it perfect? How am I going to make all of the combination of sticks and colors come together? In was one this an piece? actual forest setting in our region? It up here? was a picture that I took traveling with my husband mm -hmm. and it really is beautiful um, on the picture. So it's one thing to see the picture and another one creates a beautiful masterpiece. So. I have to tell you the truth that the piece, while I was working on it, made it to the floor of my studio many times and I couldn't pick it up for the longest time and that's what I mean by being challenged by my artwork because in the end of the day I'm so proud of it and it has such beautiful combination of colors and such great variety of sticks I think but it's it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna go someplace you didn't want to go in this interview but there's a very good reason for it. You're known very regionally as a fabulous makeup artist with a major contract yes. here at Christian Dior. That's the only time I'm gonna mention it because that's the evolution of your talent. It comes from your heart and your ability to draw facially and portraiturally on the canvas. But every knot in this tree of uh, these trees, to me, an has an illusion of an eye. Yes. Now tell me what that created in your heart when you saw the knots becoming eyes. A connection with nature. Uh, if you, not humans, but it's nature. It's connection with nature because I feel that nature, more and more I learn about it and more and more I paint the trees, it just tells you how it connects nature to humans because the eye on the <laughs> but tree they look like human eyes i know but it's bizarre but that's what you see in the tree and yes i saw that's an eye in every part. one of them but that's the great it's the part. connection that's the great part yes. i love the fact that you're so active with the community life uh, your involvement and your commitment to the mclaren art center yes. will any of these pieces ever be seen there before you go um, on tour to muskoka uh, well, the, the, the McLaren Art Center doesn't have um, not a tour. their show going on anywhere uh, before September, That's so right. I definitely will donate one of my pieces to still uh, continue being a part of that community um, aspect of me, but uh, at the moment I can't tell because the pieces are selling and I really can't tell you which one is going to make it where, but um, I'm still painting every day. so. What Something. in your own intuition really makes you wonder why people say each one of your pieces, come on over here with me, come here, come here, come here, come here. Each one of your pieces has a totally, drastically different persona. What is it in your heart and your soul and ability as an artist to make such radical drama in the contrast of your pieces? I fall in love. I believe it's a point in my life when I feel different things. Um, I feel flowers at some point and then I go into landscapes, but it's all about the color. It's all about the combination of a different setting and it's all about uh, how I feel at the point in my life and really my life reflects on the canvas and this beautiful flower was something that I've done. Um, yeah, tell me about from... Valentina, this beautiful flower, the rose you call Valentina. Tell me the story behind that uh, with your aunt. I call this painting Valentina because uh, my aunt passed away a couple of years a um, couple of years ago from breast cancer and I really wanted her soul and her to live somewhere and um, paintings are timeless. It's not something that will ever be put in the dark corner and people are going to look at it and hopefully remember um, the spirit of my aunt. I hear you. Now your son Valor, is he ever in the room when you're painting and he'll say, Mom, come on, that's not believable, come on, that's not going to work. Uh, he, he's done that, but he's 19 now, so he doesn't really uh, express his feelings as much as I want him to, come but on, stand by uh, me a, couple of, a couple of last uh, month he c came in and he gave me a compliment and saying that, Mom, this work looks amazing, and to me it's the biggest compliment because the kids are not uh, someone you get compliments on art from, so it was a great satisfaction for me. It's nepotism. She's going to make a fortune. <laughs> She's going to make a fortune. Now this, to me, is a rose by any other name, so you call it Valentina that identifies it and crystallizes it in your memory.
Is this a popular piece at, at showings? People often ask you why, because it's unique. Is it a rose? Is it a tunnel? But it's perception, and that's what art is, is a perception. It's not a guarantee or an allocation, it's a perception. So that is your perception of a rose that looks like a tunnel. Yes. And, and that's pretty special. And uh, the best thing about flowers, and that's why I like to paint them, is because you almost get that graphic uh, mm. look through it. Yes. And it's, it can it's, be anything. It almost looks abstract. It but has again, a vortex. It does. Which is very cool. It does. Wow. So you don't really proclaim to say you're guided by family input. You're very much driven by your own soul and your own passion. Uh, the fashion industry would parallel you as the ability to put fabric on canvas. If you called your collection fabric on canvas as a nickname down the road in 20 years, you'd probably self-portray yourself even more. It's very textural. Is any of it palette knife or is it all brush? Do you use I've, a palette knife? I've done some palette knife before, but again, um, I really enjoy uh, playing with the different colors and having that smooth effect of it. Mm -hmm. um, you see a little bit more of a strokes and see a little bit more of a texture in some of my pieces and it's, if you go through you'll see a lot of texture coming in but it's, um, it's again it's the time of my life and what I feel about and it um, depends on the masterpiece as well. We talked earlier in pre-interview that you felt that uh, you have a love affair with art but you were inspired by my inception that I truly believe that love loves you back, or art loves you back rather. The canvas loves you back, you have a love affair because it's reciprocated. When, it, when you paint, does the painting speak to you? When you're creating it, do you feel it's speaking to you? When I create something, it just really gives me wings and it, yeah. it makes me feel alive. And every painting I absolutely love, otherwise I wouldn't spend all this time in painting it. And I think this is what comes from the painting and speaks to uh, collectors, speaks to people who view my work all the time and it's the passion that I put into them and it's the color and it's the, the shape and it's the texture but it all comes together and it's just again transforms me into the painting and back to collectors. I, I hear you. Do you ever get interior designers or clients that say will you paint a piece to complement a roomscape? Like you really don't as an artist believe you should paint an art piece to go with the sofa. Because art is malleable, it's it's it, it melts into any given environment by trial and error and the love affair for the space that it fills. But what would you say if you were commissioned to create an art piece to go with an interior design? Could I've, you do that? I've done. Are you number, interested? I've done number of commission work uh, for yes. clients and. Um, I really love to sell pieces I have because yes. if the client comes in and doesn't see what they want for their living space, I really want them to come back in the next season or uh, send them a piece that I actually have because the truth is how would they be sure if what I create is going to be something exactly what they wanted. But I've done it before and I've done beautiful work so I mean I do commission work and I don't see in the future why it wouldn't, but it's the pieces that already exist is what um, I like to show people. It's our next uh, stop on our design tour, another look at a new texture on here. Hey, hey. Rich Halliday on location for the look at 150 Dunlop at the Arena Gretchenea collection. And you know, busy mom, busy artist. Wow, and you still have time to teach. Tell me some more about your teaching at, the, at your home gallery. I've been teaching for about seven years now, Richard, and it really the most satisfying thing I've ever done because I teach uh, young kids and I also teach adults. And the most satisfying thing for me is just to 
transform my knowledge and my passion for art and uh, give somebody an opportunity to experience that passion themselves. And I've got younger kids that uh, have been taking that throughout their life and painting and uh, having that as something else that they can enjoy in their life and that is very satisfying. Isn't it amazing as being a teacher it also educates you? You learn from teaching. Oh, it does, it does. There's and no doubt about that. The students are the ones who inspire me the most because sure. I'm very critical of my own work For and I'm sure. a little bit more of a perfectionist. But mm -hmm. when you see somebody that's fresh talent picking up the brush and creating yes. a masterpiece, this is the biggest gift for me. That's something that yes. I help them learn and something that I um, can show them as uh, an art teacher. I think teaching, talking about driving you is also part of your drive, is teaching. And you say where you get your drive artistically. How much of that comes from teaching it? How much of it? I think a lot of it. think of that before? I think a lot of it does. And, you know, it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel timeless. Yeah. And it really is a great satisfaction for somebody to say, you know, this is my art teacher. And yes. see what she helped me do. And yes. it really makes me happy to be able to do something like that. Oh, man. It's a gift. Do you realize the gift? Does an artist realize their merit? Or is it the old adage that an artist isn't truly uh, appreciated until they're dead? I think it's very hard to be an artist in the way that um, we artists are very critical of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we, um, it's not all the time you look at the painting and think, oh my goodness, this is the best thing ever that mm -hmm. I've ever created. You always wait for that satisfaction from a collector or satisfaction from um, a bystander or somebody to give you a compliment. So it's, you can paint a lot of different paintings and you can think they're amazing, but at the end of the day, we still have those doubts, mm -hmm. thinking that maybe it's not perfect, maybe it's not something that a lot of people necessarily want in their homes. And it's, there's always a doubt, but there's also moments of success where you really satisfied with your work and you get a lot of compliments on it as well. Let's move on to our next uh, passport in our artistic journey. Holy heck, is this not an amazing contrast? Over here, lovely one. Is this not an amazing contrast of anything we've seen to this point? Tell us the inspiration behind Drama de Lemon. This uh, picture, Richard, is interesting. You uh, called it with a really nice Italian accent because as an artist too, uh, the name inspires you and you want to name your piece that really tells you a little bit more about it. Well, when I um, was creating these pieces, uh, the, the lemons, it reminded me of Italy. It reminded me of something you see in Renaissance paintings because it has the darkness, it has the contrast. But this at the same drama. time, yeah. but at the same time, the lemons were just a little bit more of a pop. And I wanted to call it an Italian because I really loved how it rolled um, the mm -hmm. name of it. And I had a compliment from a visitor um, here, and she said that. This is exactly what it reminds me of, is visiting Nona in mm. Italy. Ah. And it was, um, I think the name was spot on, but yeah. it also, the lemons uh, created that drama. That I want to get out my lemonata liqueur lemonata. when I'm drinking. It's a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful, my lemonata liqueur. Now, this is really, really drama. The lemon and the acid yellow with the dark. Um, was it in a dark room with a spotlight? Did you actually set this up? I did set it up and it wasn't dark, but I improvised that as well because I really love the contrast. And you can probably see through all the pieces of my collection that um, dramatic effect is something that I'm looking for. And either it's a flower or it's a landscape, I really like that pop. And here was my lemon. As stunning as you look on camera, I want Terry to show me how this looks on screen because the drama of this piece on camera is just unique. It really is. And when you see the playback, you'll be quite amazed at how you get that citrus excitement and that uh, acidosis kind of charge from seeing the drama. And we all enjoy it here in the gallery, but this will translate beautifully to film. Back in a minute, Rich Holiday on location with The Look, with the Irina Gretchenea collection.
Every artist is, is driven and art driven and the heartfelt passion that comes from the soul and every artist doesn't feel complete on an artist's collection when it's so highly exhibitive of their talent. So we will ask Irina that collection, a uh, question today about her collection. Come here you, what is it that drives you and what is your driven element that gets you up in the morning? I like to paint and I this is what my real passion is but I do have goals as an artist and I really um, set goals every day for myself and I really dream about having my own gallery and having my own shows all around the world and um, just connect with different artists and to really um, show the talent to you in different areas in the world and being able to uh, connect with people. Mm. I know we weren't going to do this, but I am fascinated by the name you gave this piece. Does it have a name? It's Birches. 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 Like beaches, only birches. It's Birches. That's fantastic. <laughs> the texture. And those little eyeballs coming out in the bark aren't quite as obvious in this piece. It's, it's so, very yeah. uh, challenging to do yeah. the texture again. And really, this is part of my passion. It's yeah. because I really like to uh, transform artwork into something that looks realistic. And you wanting to touch it and see how real it is. Fashion has so many mediums, and me as a hair and makeup artist and fashion and style personality, I was inspired by Audrey Hepburn. Crazy fact, no big deal. It is what it is. Now, do you have an inspiration in fashion, a designer that makes it work, think, connects art with fashion? I think being uh, in love with bright colors, I think the only and the most amazing um, inspiration for me was Giovanni Versace mm. and his colors and his ability to create that excitement on the fabric was something that I really took with me and you can probably see it in my flowers because it's um, if you can see there's a flower um, that I've called exposed that it has different uh, colors that just uh, transform from one thing to to another. As a teacher and an inspired heart in the art world, you must have a specific or favorite student in every classroom. Do you have any tap tips or hats off to up and coming artists that you'd like to mention? I think what I'd like to, uh, for any of my students to remember is that they have to follow their passion. Mm -hmm. If this is something that they want to take with them and work with for the rest of their life, it's a beautiful thing to do, but stick to the passion and never settle for anything less than what they uh, want, to, want to do and want to see um, where they want to see their artwork because that really there is no limitations. I believe that the only limits we set are the ones that we limit or we set ourselves. So. Um, for young artists just to create and follow the passion and follow their dreams and um, do the work they want. Well said and well done. Irina, I want to thank you for being with us today. What a treat to thank profile you, the inner workings of a true artist in our region here, Barry. And ultimately speaking, we'll look for more of your traveling shows and uh, tours coming up. Your website is? Um, my website is um, irinagretchenai.com, so you can see all the different updates. If there is anything that I um, do throughout the year, um, I would love to see all of you who can appreciate my artwork, and uh, looking forward to see you again. Well, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I guarantee you're going to fall for Irina Gretchenai. Cheers. Rich Holiday on location for The Look.